2022 has still only just begun and I have played so many Switch games that I think you should know about, including one that's really popular that I'm late to the game on. So I just thought I'd pop in to talk about them. Maybe you've played these games and you have a different opinion than I do and you want to drop a comment and let us know, or maybe you haven't and now you've got something to look forward to. Either way, please drop this video a thumbs up if you like this type of video and let's first talk about Slime Rancher. So people have told me about this game, they said it's a little bit like Stardew Valley and from what I saw of it, I didn't know what to make of it, but it's actually pretty cute and fun and wholesome. It's almost like you're walking around this wasteland and the engine of it actually reminds me of Borderlands and the movement, I can't tell if it's 30 frames per second or something higher or what because the movement and the motion is just done so well, it's very fluid, which to me, I'm someone who's very particular on that kind of thing. If you're doing first person kind of shooter game like this, now here's the thing, it's not a shooter. It looks like it, it controls kind of similarly to it, but there's no actual violence here. What you do is you walk around looking for these little slime things and they're very cute and very funny. They're making little noises and just smiling the entire time. It reminds you of like a Squishmallow or something, but anyway, it's kind of sad. You actually take them and then you go back to your camp and you make these cages, these little pens for them and you throw them in there and you breed them basically. And then they poop out little materials that you sell for money. Now, there are different types of these little slimes and you need to know what creates what. So you can do little combinations and they can make hybrids. But if you accidentally make the wrong combination, they will turn into enemies. And there's something cool about this game is that it's pretty customizable. So if you want to, you can turn the enemies all the way off. Now, I like to leave the enemies on because it gives me a little bit of challenge, gives me that risk and reward, but it's nice to know if you wanna turn that all the way off and just relax, you definitely can. Each slime has their own likes and dislikes and they like different types of food that can help them grow and multiply. And you can find this food when you're out exploring looking for slimes. You take this food and then you can actually grow it back at your base as well. And so there is a crop growing element to it as well that does give you those kind of Stardew Valley vibes. So a lot of it has to do with this exploration and just going out into the world. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the graphics there are not the prettiest. It is an indie game, and actually Slime Rancher 2 is in the works right now, which I'm actually excited about because I'm just now jumping on this and there's already a new one. I'm already excited to see what this game can be like when it's got a little bit bigger budget put towards it, I would assume, hopefully, I don't know. I would just like to see them up the ante with this. But it's a really fun game, it's really cute, and I don't know about you all, but something that I like about games is upgrading. And that's something you can do a lot here with your money. You can upgrade your abilities, a lot of stuff to just keep the game exciting and fun. I downloaded this game and most of these games on this list whenever there was an indie sale going on, a really good indie sale, and I really don't regret any of them. I mean, if I could cut one of these games, I definitely have my first pick, which I'll tell you about in a second, but one game I've been playing a lot lately is The Long Dark. This game is awesome. Now, I'm not one to usually play survival games. I'm new to the genre, but I downloaded Don't Starve back when it was on sale, and that kind of like got me into things. The Long Dark, it has a easy mode, it's got a story mode, and that's where I started. I figure, hey, if I can beat the story once on easy mode, then I can go back on the harder mode and just get more used to it. But I will tell you, and this may be a spicy take, but this game reminds me of Skyrim and Breath of the Wild. Yes! especially, I guess, at least in the story mode, because, I mean, it's so much about exploration. There's the survival element, but when you've got that so low on the meter like I do, I mean, you're just out there, you're exploring, there are these wolves, and, you know, Breath of the Wild, it actually has these kind of survival elements. I want to say even Skyrim, I think they have a hardcore survival mode, don't they? Or maybe that's just Fallout, I don't know but now it's making me a little more interested in those things. Because like, okay, so Skyrim, you can just kind of go anywhere you want, right? And a lot of that game is you are just running up and down these hills and these mountains out in the snow. And now I realize how much of that I took for granted because I mean, dude, you're just hanging out in the snow in Skyrim with no problem. Well, the long dark reminds me of that. It's not open world, at least not in the story mode, but it is open sandbox. And you know, it feels like open world, there's exploration, but you can't just go hang out in the snow forever like you have a temperature gauge and you don't just eat to replenish your health whenever you want like if you get hungry 
You got to eat. You got to find food. And then a storm might come and you see that coming. A blizzard is coming overhead and you got to find any kind of shelter you can find. Even if it's just a rundown car and then you're in the car because it's a little warmer than it is outside. And then you're looking through the glove box, looking for something to drink because you're getting thirsty. It's just really fun. It sounds kind of overwhelming, but I'm telling you, when you have it on easy, it's not. I went into a house and I just stole the toilet water and I drank it and I'm perfectly fine. I have to assume it's only because I was on easy mode. I think if I wasn't on easy mode, I would have to find a stove and cook the water, hopefully to make it sanitary. So I can see where they did go easy on me in a couple places. So it's very scalable. If you want it to be easy, you can do that. If you want it to be a little harder, you can. I will say in the first hour, I died like 20 times. And then after that, I didn't die like ever. So once you get your stuff, your inventory, it gets a little easier and you kind of get the gist of, of what to avoid and how to play the game. But like the more tired you get, the less stuff you can carry. And if you're over encumbered, you can still walk. But like if you're going up a hill, you risk spraining your ankle. You know what I mean? And so that's one of those things like I was talking about with Skyrim. Like you can just go up these random angles up these hills but in this game there's consequences for that there's consequences for like everything and i will say the graphics they scale the switch very well this game has that realistic look to it but it also has a little bit of that kind of oil painting watercolor whatever it reminds me of dishonored and it makes me want dishonored on the switch but yeah i recommend the long dark especially if it's on sale it's really fun it's kind of a slow long game you know if you if you sit down to play it you're gonna be playing for an hour or two at least another game that i checked out is haven park it's a cute looking game it looks like a short hike which i like better check out a short hike if you haven't yet this game is different you can't fly but i checked this one out because switch up did a really good review on it and it's cute and i will say it's a little more shallow than i thought it would be which makes sense. I mean, look at this game, but I don't know. Something about it just felt a little repetitive, but it's really cute. You just kind of walk around this forest, this park, and you get to make these little tiny settlements. Now, the repetition kind of comes from these items. You know, you don't really have that big of a selection to choose from, but don't get me wrong. You don't just immediately have everything at your disposal. You have to find these resources as you go throughout the world, and it's fun, little cute exploration, and I will tell you, it's really cool how you can rotate the items so let's say i'm at one of the campgrounds and i'm setting down a tent well you just click on it and choose rotate and then you can literally as you know whatever degree angle you want you can fine tune these items and then you can move them so if you tap a button to move well now you're holding the item and you're in moving mode and so you can just slide it around fit it into the exact angle the exact position you want to make your settlement look really nice and you know have a good looking design. And I wish that Animal Crossing had some kind of function like that. So you walk around gathering resources and there's XP, there's leveling up essentially, and there's different unlocks you can get, which is nice. It's good to have that progression in there and you use these resources to basically fulfill these objectives at the campsites with things that they want you to build. You can build like a little ice cream stand, you can just decorate it, you can put a hammock over there, a cool little garden looking canopy. Kind of go at your discretion, but also also fulfilling the requirements at the camp and more villagers will come and then the objectives will get a little bit more demanding and you just kind of repeat this process. It's pretty wholesome, it's peaceful, it's relaxing. It's a good game to play when you're trying to wind down and just kind of settle in for the night. I don't regret this purchase, but if I had to remove one item from this list, it would probably be this game just because it's probably really short and there's not as much to do as these other games. And I got two more games left. Please drop a comment below and let me know what you think of these games. These last two games they have Kind of a similar theme and the first one i want to talk about is again another game i'm probably late to subnautica this game is wild it's beautiful it's scary it's mysterious it reminds me of playing games back in the day when i was a kid not knowing at all what i'm getting into and just figuring it out as i go along and i don't know if it's just me but i think that's how this game is meant to be played it does a good job so far of kind of guiding you along barely just enough so you can go in at your own pace and discover 
discover what you're exactly supposed to do. It actually reminds me of Echo the Dolphin, right? Because it seems relaxing and you're swimming underwater, you're exploring the fish and all this stuff, yet there's a looming eerie vibe about the whole thing. And it's very customizable too, like we were just talking about with Slime Rancher. I mean, you can go in and you can turn off oxygen so that you never run out of oxygen. I think you can turn off the hunger meter. Like, you can completely customize it. Like, I was just joking with myself. I was like, what if I could go in there and just turn off the whole oxygen meter? And you can. That way you can just swim forever if you want to. So, you can really play this game how you want, but at the end of the day, it is survival. You know, it reminds me kind of of Prey, the way it has that fabricator on your ship where you just put these resources in and then it crafts things for you. You can go swim as far as you want. And yeah, that's another weird thing that you can turn off. You can literally just turn off story. And it's not like a different game mode. It's the same game. You just, boom, click, turn off the story and there's no story. You're just, you're just there, you're playing and you're exploring. And it's awesome and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing. And I think that's what a game like this should be. An exploration game like this should be. It's like I'm actually the one out here exploring and figuring out what I'm supposed to do by trial and error and piecing everything together. And I think that's a sign of good game design. You know, that's kind of how the long dark was as well. Like you just jump in and you're like, okay, let me kind of figure out what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to go. And I think that's a really good way to make a game. You got to find out which fish you can eat, which fish can help you revive your thirst. And you just got to go in there and explore at your own pace. Like I said, it does get pretty scary. There's actually even some really creepy sound effects that make this game a little unsettling. So sometimes late at night, I won't play it. I'll play some else because I don't want to end the night kind of feeling a little freaked out and it can it can actually make you feel a little freaked out but I will say the water physics the water sound effects the visuals it just looks really good and now I, of course on switch you know it, it really makes me wonder how beautiful this would look on PC or console because you can tell the switch does cut some corners as they have to but overall I would say it's a pretty solid port the frame rate seems pretty steady and it's a really fun game Game. I wouldn't say it's my favorite one on this list, but it's a really fun game. It's really interesting. Definitely check it out. Yeah, let's talk about Minecraft. This game definitely gets way too much hate for why? Out of all the games on this list, I bought this one at the same time in January, and I've been playing this more than the other ones by a long shot. Now, Minecraft came out over 10 years ago, and I did play it back then on the Xbox 360. But if I recall correctly, the first time my house got destroyed, I quickly put it on creative mode and never looked back. And I played it for like a week or two, and I did find it to be really relaxing, but I didn't know anything at all about it. When I heard this was a survival game, it made me interested in it, actually, and it made me take another look at it. Again, once I had played Don't Starve, and I had a little bit of that taste of the survival, I was like, huh, let me take a look at this. So I threw that sucker on easy, real quick and never looked back i i'm telling you these survival games easy is the way to go for me that way i can still play the game and have fun and not have to worry about babysitting every single little metric the entire time and in fact i forget this is a survival game and then i notice my hunger is low and i'm like oh i guess i gotta eat but Usually I'm just eating for health anyway, because I always end up running into trouble. But I will tell you, if you're watching this, you've probably already played Minecraft. If you haven't, I'm telling you, check it out. Don't rule it out. Forget about all the stigma. There's something for everyone here. That's what's so cool about it, because I didn't know, but my friend had just gotten into Minecraft a month ago as well. And he said, yes, all I'm doing is I'm just obsessed with building farms. And I'm over here thinking like, I, I haven't done any farming whatsoever in this game. I almost didn't even realize you could, like I've just been building dungeons. I've just been building tunnel after tunnel after tunnel, exploring the caves, taking over the caves, making them my own. And I will tell you, this is another game where they don't really explain much. So you have to just kind of do your own research, do some experimentation, but it's really fun because you can be somebody that likes to battle in this game. You can be a person that doesn't battle whatsoever. Like I said, you can just shut that sucker all the way off and just go straight up creative mode where you can literally just fly around the entire world. You can play solo or you can bring your friends over and just create an entire world and you can have one person that's dedicated to building tunnels, one person that's dedicated to getting resources and everybody pulls everything in together and makes a little under 
underground bunker and creates these different chests where you just organize all of your items and you share everything together and there's just so much you can do in this game. I mean Minecraft really changed the world of video games in my opinion because it wasn't until this game that games just started putting crafting in everything like I played a first person shooter uh, a couple of years ago one of my favorite IPs Deus Ex and I think the newest game there's like you craft ammunition you craft stuff it's ridiculous this game didn't invent the crafting mechanic but it definitely popularized it without Minecraft I don't even know if we would have terraforming and Animal Crossing you know what I mean like it just it's it's amazing there's definitely a reason why this game is so popular it's so chill it's so relaxing the music is so relaxing if I play this game if I boot it up I know I'm lying to myself if I say I'm gonna play for just 30 minutes or an hour I mean the first time I did a multiplayer stream on my twitch I actually ended up streaming till 5 a.m. Yes, it was like an eight hour stream. People from the other side of the world started logging on and I was like, wow, I just can't stop. And I will say the movement in this game is done very, very well. The frame rate, the fluidity, the motion, like I said earlier, that's something that's important to me. And I was wondering about that going into this game and I was a little worried because, I mean, you can see the graphics, they look like super throwback, but when you get in play, it doesn't play like a throwback. Minecraft has to be my favorite game on this list and this year is off to a good start for me on the Nintendo Switch for gaming. Let me know what you all think about these games or if you know any other survival games that aren't too hard, that are fun and wholesome, let me know as well in the comments. If you don't mind, subscribe if you like the Nintendo Switch as much as I do and I'll see you all in another video.